What's going on everybody? Today I am playing Sister of the Thorn, the new elf class for Karelian. Today I'm running Killing Blows for Temp Health, Isha's Bounty for more power, Smiter for that juicy melee damage, Radiant Inheritance because it's ridiculous, Moray Hake's Doom Sight for crits, and Blood Racer Thicket. For the gear, Sword and Dagger, Crit Chance Power for Skaven, Swift Slaying. Briar Javelin, Power vs. Chaos, Power vs. Monsters, Hunter, I'm running into the nest, I was too lazy to reroll that Power vs. Chaos, I'm sorry. Uh, the Necklace, Health, Block, Glass Reduction, and Bark Skin. On the Charm, Crit Power, I'm trying something a little bit different out today, Power vs. Skaven and Proxy. And then the Trinket, Cooldown, Curse, and Shrapnel. Without any further ado, let's do this. And watch the chaos unfold. I'd love a full-scale civil war, but at the very least, I think we'll delay the work on the Skittergate. Oh, don't look at me like that. You know you'll enjoy it once you're there. So today I am running a mercenary with a great sword, an ironbreaker with dual hammers, sneaky this time. and a zealot that? with Come a billhook. Even you should have the hang of it by now. Onward, story. Onward. So today we're going to be talking about a guy that I used to work with. We're going to be calling him Gerald. That's not his real name, but I don't feel like doxing him, so Gerald is what we're going to call the guy. I worked with this guy for about two years, and in that time a lot of strange stuff happened. So to really understand Gerald, you have to know the story. So let's start from the beginning. He got hired back in, I don't know, like 2018, I think, by now? Yeah, so a couple years ago, you know, I was maybe like 23, 22, something like that. I was younger, younger man. A bit more naive, a bit more trusting of people. And this guy on paper uh, had a really good resume. Like he had, he was only 31, but he had like tons of work experience. He had a lot of good education for uh, like the the industry that we were in. Die. Die. Sorry. Hello. Die. Thank you. Let's go. Javelin is amazing. I love it. <laughs> no. So he had all this really good work experience. He had a lot of good uh, education and like t machinery and the just take that, of course. And like the stuff that we kind of do for our job. So it seemed like you would be a really good fit. Where's this gun rat? Where are you? Uh, that's adorable. He tried so hard. Oh God. So we hire the guy, and for about the first year he's working for us, it's pretty much smooth sailing, you know, it's not... He's not, like, missing time, he's not doing anything bad, he's... It's all pretty normal, he's doing his work, he's working hard. Oh yeah, walk right in front of me, that is the thing to do. Oh, bots never change. Push, 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 get up there! Get away from that gas, man. So about a year passes and, you know, nothing too crazy has gone on. But there are a couple things that I've noticed about Gerald. God. One thing is that his armpits are always insanely sweaty. Like, I don't know why, but his, it, like, even in the wintertime, the dead of winter when it's, like, below freezing... He'll have an undershirt, a normal shirt, and then like a sweatshirt on top of that, and he'll sweat all the way through it. He has the sweatiest freaking armpits, this guy. And like, you know, it, it, like we talked about it at work, like why does he have such sweaty freaking armpits? Like, who, what's wrong with him? You know, does he have a condition? He never talked about having a condition, so it kind of goes unsolved as like a mystery. Like, we don't really know why this guy has such sweaty pits. Oh, the Grim's up here, that's right. I totally forgot. Another thing is that he had... Uh, 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 no, I'm stabbing, I need to be throwing, oh. That was embarrassing. 
worst game of the day, I'm sorry. Another thing with Gerald is that he is always talking to us about how he's got Lyme disease. And he, he kind of, he's a little bit of a whiner, like he whines like, oh, I've got Lyme disease and my knees hurt all the time. I'm like, dude, you're like 30. You know, your knees definitely, like he's always like, my knees are shot. My knees are shot. I hurt so much. I'm like, you're definitely, you're fine. All right, relax. Walk it off. It's okay. Uh, little secret for you guys. He did not have Lyme disease. It was a lie. But I, he would try to get, like, sympathy from us. It was very strange. But we didn't know this at the time. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, I have to win. Oh, I missed. Shouldn't have jumped. No. Pick that up. So, you know, whatever. So there's that stuff. He's a little whiny, but for the most part, he's fine. There's nothing wrong with the guy. I've worked with much worse people before. And, you know, he does a pretty good job, and he manages to impress management and all that stuff. But then, you know, there's always the politics, right? There's always the politics at any place of employment. So our manager at the time had informed us that he would be uh, moving on to greener pastures, he'd be working uh, for a different company, they would pay him more, blah, blah, blah. You know, it wasn't like a bad ending or anything. It was a very amicable ending to a uh, relationship with that guy. But it left a void. You know, we didn't have a manager. Well, we know this guy, Gerald. He's been working for us for about a year. He knows his stuff. He's qualified. He's got a really good resume. Let's make a manager. So they promote this guy to manager. Oh, this, oh, he put the tome down. Damn it! The tome is up there. You motherfucker. All right, well, no tome today. So yeah, they make this guy the manager. And slowly but surely, as the next year goes by... What, what, what hit me? I don't understand. It's weird. Okay. Hi. Okay. You know, slowly but surely time goes by. Uh, and his hard work that he's been doing slowly kind of becomes less... Oh my god. Assassins freak the shit out of me. Like, I am so scared of them. <laughs> they actually scare me. I hate the noise they make. It's horrible. Look right above us. Where are you? Let me just skirt. Oh. Well, yeah. Thank you for just taking that hit. I'm gonna go push this lever. So yeah, he slowly starts to become more and more of a lazy fuck. Like. He's shirking off responsibilities, he's telling us to do stuff that was clearly meant for him. Because even though he was the manager, he wasn't like, you know, top dog calling the shots. There was one guy in a position of power above him. But he wasn't physically present at our um, location all the time. It's a very complex situation, I know. Lots of details. Let's go back to the scrim, dude. Nope. Yeah, why not? It's so absurd how strong this talent is. Ah. I was itching my nose and I was not prepared for the sword. Thought I could get away with a nose itch, but no. Get these rats here and die, please and thank you. Uh, skirt. Silly hook rat. So we'll give this ammo to Barton. Oh. Hello. That's odd. Give that to Zealot. We'll get the other tome, hopefully. So Gerald, yeah, he's becoming a lazy fuck. He is becoming more and more of like a like a sloth, if that makes any sense. He's spending like half the day now, 
damn it. Taking things. No. I have to pay attention for when they put them down, because they don't get here. Oh, that would reach. So he's literally spending half the day, like, slouched over his toolbox, like, sleeping, texting, doing whatever. He's take going to the bathroom, like, 12 times a morning. Like, this is all before lunchtime. This guy is, like... He's, I don't know, he, he thinks like now he's manager, he like doesn't have to do any work. But it's exactly the opposite. When you're the manager, you have to do so much more work. And that's just how it is. Being manager of, wh of where I work is like, a, is like, yeah, you get a little bit of raise, but it's like three times as much work. You have to stay late, you have to do all this stuff. You got to take responsibility for stuff. All things he, he was not really keen to do. So, yeah, so a couple more months go by. Time goes by, and eventually we would learn that this guy has a major pill problem. What was his uh, drug, uh, you know, drugs of choice? Multiple? Well, the biggest one for him was Xanax. He was a giant pill head. He would take like, I don't know, it seemed like he would take four Xanax a day. Because he was always just so loopy and so out of it. He would slur his speech, he would sweat profusely, and on top of that, we would later learn that he was a coke head. He was doing copious amounts of cocaine. Oh, and did I mention he lived with his mom? Yeah, that's right. His mom would show up, like, at our place of business with brown bag lunches for her boy. She would, like, hand deliver this kid lunch. And I didn't really think too much of it at the time because they lived really close. Like, they lived about maybe two minutes away from where we worked. She's like, okay, well, you know, they live super close. She's bringing them lunch, whatever. But I didn't know at the time that he lived with her. Which made it all the more weird. <laughs> so he's a coked up head. We hired this one guy <laughs> for a little bit. He was the kind of guy you work with that just has no filter, you know? We'll say anything. We'll call him Steve. Steve had absolutely no filter and didn't care about what anybody thought of him. Oh, what he would, yeah, what he, what he said just didn't matter. For example, there was this news story one time where this woman had been in a coma. She was in a coma for maybe like, I don't know, 10, 11 months or so. Oh my god, how far away are you? Eh, ow. Where even are you? Wow. Cool. No, 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 no. Oh, he's so silly. Let me stab you. That's a terrible idea. Stab at a horde like that. But it doesn't matter, because I make temp health. So there's this girl who's in a coma for like 10 months. I knew I shouldn't have used it, damn it. And Steve was, like, like the, the, the news story was like, oh yeah, this, this girl's in a coma, and she gave birth. Well, she was in a coma for longer than nine months. She wasn't pregnant when she went into the coma, which means someone broke into her room, had his way with her, and then she gave birth. And Steve was like, yeah, that guy deserves to see his child and, like, shouldn't go to jail or some shit. Like, he had this whole thing about how this guy shouldn't go to jail. And we're all like, dude, no. Okay. And that guy is the guy that would, like, talk shit about Gerald all the time. He was like, man, you know you are freaking worthless until, like, lunchtime, right? And he would just, like, talk shit at the guy and, like, point out all his obvious, like, flaws and just the fact that he was such a lazy bastard. And it was kind of hilarious to watch, honestly. Glug. Alright, let's get that tone.
So these are the two guys I'm working with. One of them's a lazy guy, and the other one's a crazy guy. And it's not fun for me, because <laughs> I have to deal with both of them, and it's a nightmare. Anyway, back to Gerald. So his drug-induced, you know, adventures get so bad that I feel like he started losing grip of, like, losing a grip of reality, if that makes any sense. So, like, we had these little... I guess they were like rat catchers all around the shop. Not the kind where like the metal thing snaps back really quick. We had the sticky kind. It was designed to like trap the rat and then they would just starve to death. I don't know if it's any more of a humane way to like catch a rat or a mouse or whatever. But that's what we had. That's what they gave us. So we're checking the, the traps one day. Wait, what? What? Get out of here. Come on. So we're checking the traps one day, and we find, like, there's a lizard. You know, there's a lizard just on the, on the, 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 the sticky, whatever material. Is just, is there. So we're like, oh, I don't know, you know, a dead lizard, whatever. And Gerald rushes over, like, nearly in tears, blubbering. Sc like, screeching, demanding that we, that we help it. And I, this lizard is obviously dead. Like, it, Rick and Mortis has set in... <laughs> it's clearly been dead for, like, a week. There's probably, like, fungus growing out of its tail or whatever. It's decomposing, and he thinks it's alive. So he picks it up, peels it off the sticky material, picks it up by the tail, and is just holding it. Oh, you know we're fighting this. Come on. Come on now. Who would I be if I didn't fight the patrol? Die. So he picks the lizard up, off, peels it off the sticky material on the trap, is holding it by the tail, looking at us with like puppy dog eyes, like, guys, we have to save the lizard! We have to save the lizard, guys! And we're all just staring at him like, uh, does, does he, um, does he know the lizard is, is uh, dead? You know? We're just kind of talking to each other like, does this motherfucker know this lizard not alive? He knows this lizard's not alive, right? He's playing. No, but he wasn't playing. He was completely freaking serious. He thought this lizard was not dead. And he was imploring us to, like, save it. Like, what are we gonna do? Give it CPR? Mouth to mouth on a dead lizard? It's dead! He had no grasp of reality. Because he was high out of his mind. All goddamn day. Oh god, oh god, don't push me off, fuck. Oh no. Oh no. I was not ready for both of them to immediately shoot me. <laughs> Alright. Look at these bots, man. Bots are so smart. Can you calm them down here? I'm trying to... Thank you, bots. Yeah, I expected the gun rat. I did not expect the fire rat to also, like, almost knock me off the fucking cliff. That was a little bit worrying. Hey, purple. Cool. There was another time where, like... How do I explain this? He was... He, he went through a couple girlfriends, right? He had this... I don't know, I guess, like, one thing to know about Gerald... Where are you going? I'm back! Is this is this really the fastest route to get to me? Was that worth it? I don't think so. One thing to know about Gerald is he was absolutely terrible with his finances. I mean, the man would buy things he couldn't afford. It was terrible. He had this, like, 2017 custom fucking, you know, Chevrolet Silverado. All the bells and whistles on it had a freaking lift kit on it. Custom freaking, like, 23-inch wheels, rims. Like, decked-out truck. Probably like a $50,000, $60,000 truck. This guy doesn't make that much money. Like, he can't afford this truck. 
clearly like he you know, took out a loan for this or whatever. And then he's got like a toolbox. His toolbox is like $8,000. This guy is like in tons of debt. So there's this one day, he actually tried to like move out of his mom's house. Oh, that's, what? He just dashed off the edge almost, that's okay. Weird. Not, not, the, not what I would have done, Zealot. So he tried to move out of his mom's house, and he's apparently dating this girl. Yada yada, long story short, like, the realtor he used, like, one of our co-workers knows, like, our, our office lady, our secretary lady, like, she knows this realtor. So she's like, yeah, I'll hook you up, whatever, blah, blah. So he, you know, he gets the house, I, th I think he put the down payment on, on, on the place or whatever. Or a down payment, or maybe first month's rent, I can't remember if he was renting it or trying to buy it. Probably renting. Knowing him. And he ended up not paying a bill there for like seven months. Kind of hilarious. But he comes to us one day and he's like, man, can't believe it. This, the girl I've been dating, man. I gave her two grand to pay the landlord, man. And what does she do? She goes to the mall and spends all. He tried to tell us that this chick went to the mall and spent $2,000 that was meant for their rent money. Like, uh, first off, we not like. <laughs> why wouldn't you just pay the bill yourself if you're even at all remotely concerned about it? You clearly can't trust this girl. It's absurd. He just did all these absurd things, and he would like, like, it was clearly just to cover for him because he had no money. You know, because he had made a bunch of dumb financial decisions. But he had to spin it in a way that, like, we would give him sympathy. So we're like, yeah, yeah, Gerald, whatever, dude. And as it got worse, he would, like, start being more and more late to work. Like, the dude lived literally less than a thousand feet. It's like 3,000 meters for you hero people. Away from where we worked, and he was late all the time. He'd be like half hour late, hour late, 20 minutes late every freaking day. And it got to a point where Upper Mandarin was like, Okay, dude, listen, if you're late one more freaking time, like you're gone, we're gonna fire you. And man, when I heard that, I could not have been more happy, dude. I really could not have. Uh, come here, come here, thank you. Oh, I got him. Cool. Yeah, I'm just gonna walk away from all that. That was another one. Never mind. Never mind, I have to fight it. I can't see. Oh, yes. Okay. Any day now. Thank you. Alright. So, yeah, one more day. If you're late, one more day, you're gone, bro. Because he was late you know, 40 freaking times by now. He should have been gone way sooner, but no. I don't know why he wasn't. So, of course, like the very next day, he's an hour late to work. Shows up at 8 o'clock, you know, hung over like a motherfucker, high as shit. Uh, hey guys, how you doing? You know, and he gets a phone call. God, get out of here. I'm like, what's up, bro? It's a phone call. He gets this like confused look on his face, like, Ugh. "What's going on here?" Like, you know, like he had a look like I just got fired, but I don't know why I just got fired. You know, kind of look on his face. Pretty hilarious. Where they scare me so much. Dude. I hate assassins. You know what you're about, I do. Hello. So of course he's now related. He gets a phone call. He gets fired. He's like, "What did I do?" Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He goes home. But then they're like, "Yeah, you know, his like his toolbox and all his tools are still there." So it's like, "Bro, you gotta come get these these tools and, and stuff." Like, come on. And he, oh my God. And he was like, "I'm not putting that in my truck," because he was one of these guys that had a fucking pimped out truck but would never use it. Let me 
should just murder him. Hey, day, 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 day. No, you're blocking my Briar Javelin. No, no, no blocking. There you go. Dead. Good job. Good job, elf. So what we ended up doing is getting our big ass fucking forklift. A forklift that is capable of picking up 15,500 pounds. I don't know what that is in not pounds because I'm an American, I'm sorry. But it's a big ass forklift. It's like the size of a house. It can pick up huge stuff. We pick up his toolbox with it. And you know, this is a loud diesel powered forklift from the 70s. It's old. It's loud so it's like all the way down the street we drive it through his neighborhood with big ass toolbox on these forks and all the way down his neighbors are looking at us like what the hell what, what is this you know is this like is the parade here no it ain't the parade lady we go right up to his house and we drop that toolbox down right in front of his yard and we drive away. He was sitting there smoking a cigarette with his sunglasses on, enjoying the sun and the shine on a Tuesday morning. And it was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. So yeah, I mean, that's Gerald for you. Lazy, drug addict, annoying, liar. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to this channel, liking this video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've ever worked with a person that was just a complete shithead. Um, because I know there's uh, probably more out there than I would like to think that there are. People who are just absolute scumbags. That's it for me, guys. Have yourselves a lovely day.